Quantum computing might feel like light years away from design, but the more I study it, the more parallels I see. In fact, lately, some of the most profound design lessons I've been learning come from the strange, powerful world of quantum thinking. Traditional or classical computing is binary. It's defined by ones and zeros, true or false on or off. And I find we as designers often fall into that same trap. We often wonder if our designs are usable or not, if they're functional or broken, if they're good or bad. But quantum comp computing introduces a whole new mindset. In quantum systems, bits can be in superposition, holding multiple possibilities at once. And particles can be entangled, influencing each other even when they're separated. And as designers, I think we can learn a lot from this because human behavior isn't binary. It's layered, it's emotional, it's contextual. It even exists in the in-between sometimes. And quantum computing embraces uncertainty, probability, and multidimensional relationships. And I think great design should do the same. When we design products, especially complex, high-impact ones, we're not just mapping screens. We're designing for states of mind, for workflow uncertainty, for edge cases, and for emerging behaviors. In a way, our interfaces must hold multiple truths at once. So just like a quantum bit, a good design can adapt to multiple contexts, flex for different user needs, and support different outcomes without collapsing into chaos. So no, you don't need a quantum computer to be a better designer, but the mindset behind quantum thinking, I think that's powerful. It pushes us to embrace ambiguity, designed for possibility, and built systems that are not just functional, but aware, adaptive, relational, and alive to the complexity of human experience. Even more interesting, quantum mechanics can also shift how we think about decision making. In a classical world, our decisions are either or, but in a quantum world, multiple possibilities can coexist and outcomes are influenced by observation, interaction, and entanglement. So as designers, we can apply this by recognizing that users don't always follow linear paths. Their choices are shaped by context, intent, even the way we present information. So design then isn't just about what people choose, but about how we frame choice in systems that feel intuitive, fluid, and human. So if you're a designer or even just a curious builder of systems, this kind of thinking opens new doors. I've been exploring it in my writing a lot lately, and I'd love to hear how you see the intersection between science and design.